good practice out there today. Uh, the, the rest of the game plan installed, with the exception of a couple minor situations. And then, uh, and then tomorrow we'll have a good run through, and then we'll get on the plane and get out to Seattle. Questions? You're where you want to be, I guess, the Wednesday of game week. Yeah, I feel good about where we are. I felt good about the energy the last two days. I thought the execution was good. Um, and we're a little ahead because you have a couple extra days for the first game. So now uh, we'll just clean up the finer details, continue to detail the plays and the defenses, and and I do. I feel good about where we are. Kyle, where have you seen this team benefit the most from the extra prep time? Probably the younger players. You know, I think the advancement of the younger players, guys like Dre Boggs, and Josh Hicks, Robert Martin, um, I think that helps. You know, the extra meeting time. Even a, a guy who's not a freshman but a younger player like Matt Flanagan, you know, being able to have the extra time with Coach Campy in the summer, I think all those things are, are really valuable. Kyle, there's eight true f- – I know you said yesterday there's a difference between game day depth and too deep, but – Still, so eight true freshmen on the two deep. Is that a product of this class coming in ahead of some classes, or did not have her depth on this actual team? Or why do you think that is? Uh, depth, I think you got to look at position by position. And offensive line, we needed. We knew we needed to build depth coming into the spring and training camp. So uh, you see some younger guys in the depth there, even though, like, as I said, the game day depth would be a little bit different. And there, there's no doubt that it's a partially a product of what we're able to do in the summertime. It's very hard for a, a young player to get ready. It's a little bit less hard. It's still hard, a little bit less hard than it used to be. How about Tyler Croft, Kyle? I mean, obviously last year at this time, unknown commodity, but I know Ron Prince emphasized the tight end. Do you expect Ralph to do the same? Do you expect Tyler to handle more attention from defenses? Yeah, I, I think there is a perception that, you know, that Ron – emphasize the tight end. But I think when you have Brandon Coleman and Leonte Crew, you know, on the outside, you're going to get some one-on-one matchups. And because Tyler maybe wasn't as well-known, and he took advantage of them. And now he'll be a little bit more well-known. So it'll be interesting to see you know, what the defenses do. we still got Leonte out there on one side. We'll have a combination of guys out there on the other side. And between Paul James and Desmond Peoples, we'll have a talented running back in there. So it'll be interesting to see how the different teams address Tyler. But when he's got one-on-one coverage, he's a, he's a very tough matchup. How important is the pass rush going to be to disrupt uh, what they're trying to do offensively? I think it's important if you can take – if you, if you're able – it's important on the downs where they hold the ball. You know, they, they run a very high percentage of their passing game where they're not going to hold the ball. And then what becomes important is not so much the pass rush, but those guys retracing in their lanes – if it's a screen, getting back into the rush lanes uh, to be a factor in, on the plays down the field. So you know, when they do hold the ball, there's no doubt it's a, it's a factor. But there's a certain percentage of plays they run every game where the pass rush is not going to be a factor because they get it, get it rid of it too quickly. I don't know. I don't know his number off the top of my head. But Gabe Marks, he was their top receiver last year. I understand he's working with the scout team for them because of an injury. Are you? Do you prep for a specific player? Do you expect him to play? Do you know much coming? They out have. There? They have five receivers who who all had over 400 yards receiving last year, returning. So I think you have to defend them as a system. They've got talented players all over the field, and you you really have to defend the way they they run their offense. It's. It's not – you don't defend it the same way you defend option, but, but it is similar in this sense that they force you to defend the entire width of the field every play. Gary was talking about how Ralph's kind of giving the quarterbacks a little bit more responsibility at the line. Just from your perspective, what have you seen, how they handled that, and, and like what's the benefits of that? The benefit is you, you should minimize the dead plays that you run. You, know, you shouldn't be running plays where, where they have you outnumbered. Now, you don't want to spend the whole game you know, checking at the line of scrimmage, so we're certainly not going to do that. But, uh, but I think it does give you a, a higher percentage chance to be in a good play. And then when you do get one-on-ones to take advantage of them, I think that's probably the biggest benefit that I see. And how do you think Gary's kind of responded to that responsibility? Yeah, Gary and Chris have both done a good job with it. You can only it, – it's something we've done from the very beginning since Ralph got here. And uh, I think the learning curve uh, has gone in a good direction. I think both those guys have done a good job. What have you seen uh, from Daryl Stevenson you know, this summer and how do you feel about him you know, going into the season? You know, Daryl's a guy who really worked himself from the kind of the, the outer edge of the two deep into the, the into the two deep, and Daryl's a guy who's going to play for us, and playing with with great effort, uh, doing a good job within our scheme, and, and a player who's very much improved from last year. I'm excited about what Daryl can do. Kyle, there are a lot of walk-ons that will probably be playing this Thursday. Has that have they as a group impressed you in training camp? I think in this day and age, with only 85 scholarships, I know it sounds crazy to say only 85, but. Uh, the walk-ons become very important in your program, and, and our history of them is pretty good. Guys like Gary Brackett, Sean O'Hara, and, and now more recently, you know, guys like Howard Barbieri, 
guy like Michael Burton, Paul James, and now Matt Flanagan, Joel Scarf, you know, some of the tight ends that are in there, Brian Leone before his injury, and he'll be back hopefully soon enough. Uh, but, uh, but those guys are important to the program. I think every one of them is on an individual basis. I think the job they have is a very difficult one. It's, it's not an easy thing to, to come into a program as a, as a walk-on or a preferred walk-on and, and break through into the two deep as early in the stage, as early in their careers as some of those guys have. So uh, they're very valuable. And, uh, and we have tremendous confidence in them because they, they have earned that confidence in practice. Got time for two more. What would it mean to get a win against a Pac-12 conference? I know Rutgers hasn't had a short history, but what, would it, does it mean anything? You know, what would it mean to get a, its first one against Pac-12? That means that you're 1-0, and that's the goal every week. It's, a, it's an excellent opponent. It'll be an excellent, excellent venue. Uh, winning major college football games is hard, and winning them on the road is even harder. So uh, it's a tremendous challenge we have going out west to do this, but we're excited about it. And everybody who gets on that plane tomorrow is going to be thinking in their mind that when we return, we're going to be 1-0. And then we get ready for the next game. I don't know that, it's, that we look at it any different than that. You know, we'll look back on the season at the end and decide what, how we feel about it. But this week, the most important thing is the opportunity to be 1-0. A lot of guys are going to make their debuts on Thursday night. As a coach, do you do anything differently with a guy who's going to be making his debut? Do you pull him aside, say anything? Or just let him go no, you just let him go out there and play. You know, the, the, the players that will debut have earned the right to debut. You know, they've earned that right in practice. I remember somebody asked me last year if I would uh, if I would put a freshman back to catch punts in his first game on national TV. I said, absolutely. If it's Janarian Grant, I will. And he had earned that right, and, and, and he did a good job. Uh, but I think all those freshmen that are going to play for the first time, they've earned the right to play for the first time. It's not intramurals. They've earned the right to play for the first time, and, and I'm excited for them. Thanks, Bob.